Peter Uses the Keys Why Paul? Part 8. Odd Title for Today. What Keys, you might ask? Good question and the answer, found in Matthew 16 verses 18 to 19, states, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Clearly Christ knew that there would be things in Peter's leadership and ministry that would need to be both loosed and bound, and today we'll find out about such an instance. In fact, going back to the Acts 15 record of the Jerusalem Council, of which Galatians 2 is Paul's commentary, we find, And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up, and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Acts 15 verses 6 to 10. Paul's added insight and closing out his testimony of the Jerusalem council, after having noted that Peter and the leadership of the Jerusalem church had recognized that the gospel of the uncircumcision had been given to Paul as the gospel of the circumcision had to Peter then took action. And when James, Cephas, Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Galatians 2 verse 9. Let's look more closely at this. In the scripture and given the culture of those who were Israel, the right hand is clearly symbolic of rulership, authority, sovereignty, blessing, and strength. In this instance, the authority that Christ had given Peter, both to loose and to bind, was used as evidenced by the right hands of fellowship. For here, Peter and the leadership of the Jerusalem church clearly loosed themselves from part of their great commission. Example, to go to the uttermost parts, namely all Gentile nations, per Acts 1 verse 8, and did bind themselves to go only to the circumcision, obviously doing so with the gospel of the circumcision example, concerns the promise made to the circumcision that through them the world would be blessed and complements the earthly kingdom gospel, preached by John the Baptist, Jesus Christ during his earthly ministry, and now the kingdom church in Jerusalem lead by Peter, and Christ had already bound Paul to go to the Gentiles with the gospel of grace, so with this action all bases were covered. There is so much more that could be said of these actions on the part of Peter and the eleven and Paul, but suffice it to say that they all believed that the problem had been dealt with. Yet here in his Galatian epistle we see Paul still having to deal with the exact same problem again created by kingdom Jews troubling the Gentile believers in the churches of the Galatian region. And this record of his calling and the Jerusalem council was the foundation of Paul's letter to the Galatians, aimed at using this history lesson as part of his efforts to clear up the confusion and correct the false teachings by the kingdom Jews that were troubling them. It further was the basis for him setting the record straight regarding what he refers to as my gospel and further clarifies that his gospel of grace, according to the revelation of the mystery, was different than that preached by the twelve, as the record of the Jerusalem council in Acts 15 and Galatians 2 clearly indicates. So, in conclusion, the answer to why Paul is clear. Paul was saved by grace in an encounter with the risen Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord then gave him a ministry and message that was separate and different than that of the twelve, which the accord reached in the Jerusalem Council plainly shows. As Paul continues to receive revelation from Christ and write letters, epistles, including Romans through Philemon, it becomes quite clear that this is the message for the church, which is his body in this dispensation of the grace of God today. With this said, it is hoped that this short series of thoughts regarding why Paul 
have challenged your beliefs such that you will continue looking for answers. More so, it is hoped that you will be like the Bereans who search the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Acts 17 verse 11 Lastly, it is hoped that you will dig in and seek to rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15 Thereby find out for yourself what it says to us. Don't depend on what anyone else says, including me, but go search it for yourself. If you are like me, you will find yourself in the inspired writings of Paul, who claims therein to be your apostle with a message distinctly to the body of Christ in this dispensation of the grace of God. The answers to all the pertinent questions are in his word, rightly divided. I pray you seek and find these answers.